show. My next guest is an Emmy award-winning television correspondent and medical doctor who's now starring on the TV show Dr. Danger on the high-definition channel Mojo HD. Please welcome Dr. Bob Arnott. How are you? I'm great, great. Thanks for being here on this exciting show. <clears throat> now, um, you know, I've watched your show, and a lot of people say they're putting themselves in danger. And they'll do something like they'll ride a bike off a ramp into a lake on Fox. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> it's good TV and it's fun. It seems to me that you're really going places and putting yourself into situations where you're watching it and you're thinking, why is he there in that part of the world and it looks like he's gonna get killed at any moment? Are, you're in actual danger a lot of the time. I mean, I'll give you an example. We were out in Afghanistan this summer and on, on the back of a CH-47, which is one of the main U.S. Army helicopters. Right. It's a beautiful morning. We're about maybe 12,000 feet. You can smell these wonderful pines and firs. And suddenly, I'm sitting right in the back stoop next to the gunner. I hear, and you see these white-hot flares go off the edge of the helicopter. And then an SA-6 Soviet surface-to-air missile winding up towards us. Oh, well, they, these are the, uh, the, I've heard about these, that uh, planes and some helicopters can shoot distraction flares exactly. to try and fool a surface-to-air missile. Here's what they do. They have heat-seeking missiles, and they have been sort of infrared-seeking missiles. So right. the heat seekers, those flares are supposed to distract it. The camera's running. Right. So about 10 minutes later, <laughs> another one, and this surface-to-air missile comes up. Then 10 minutes after that, we see this machine gun fire coming up from the ground with the tracers. Right. And the gunner suddenly looks a little worried. He leans into Well, he wasn't worried before this point. <laughs> uh, they're just firing missiles at us. If well, they fire machine guns, I'll get worried. Well, because he, there was something you could do about this. The other I was see. an automatic system. So this is his job. He leans into it. You're making the same noises that kids make, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, well, this, and a, this, this is a 7.62 round, which is a... Yes, round. yes, I just want to correct your sound. I knew that was a 7.26 round. <laughs> or 7.62. <laughs> we'll fix that later in editing. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> so, uh, at this, then he turns to me and says, would you like to take a few rounds? And I go, would I? Right. So, we had to turn the cameras off, but he let me take the last few rounds. And so, when people say, do you support the troops? Yeah. I say, yeah, if you go out there and fire a few rounds with them. You're supporting the troops. And it's, it's, it's fun to, to, to fire a machine and gun, I imagine. There is nothing more rewarding than getting shot at and shooting back. <laughs> what about spinning a wedding ring for about 50 seconds? 51 seconds. 51 seconds. <clears throat> now, it's a sec close second. You know, you go to these dangerous areas of the world, uh, and the, these areas in the Middle East, and I'm curious, uh, I know that once you're there, you use these different transport vehicles, or the, the military helps you get around. But how do you get to that area from New York City? Uh, what airline is taking you to these, to these places? I, I, I'm curious. I've wondered about that. Well, there's a nonstop that goes from here, a wonderful flight. Emirates goes into Dubai. Right. And there are two terminals there. There's Terminal 1, which is one of these glamorous, super modern, where all the best airlines in the world go out of. Right. And then there's a very sort of low-ceilinged uh, Terminal 2, where good people go to bad places. Right. You walk in and you look at the billboard, instead of saying Singapore, London, Paris, it's Kabul, Fallujah, Mogadishu, Baghdad. Right. And they're ragtag older. So we take this airline in, Ariana Afghan Airlines, the only one we could get on. Ariana Afghan Airlines. They, okay. We get there at 4 o'clock in the morning. They say the flight is closed and, and gone, and mm -hmm. it's a 7 o'clock flight. So we wait all day long, finally get on the flight. We get in, they upgrade us to first class, and this guy comes in and says, I'm the mechanic. And I said, well, what do you have a mechanic on the plane for? He says, Plane always breaks down. Right. And I said, well, we go to these foreign airports and we have to basically beg for parts. So he says, I want to tell you, this is blacklisted airlines. I said, what does it mean, black? He says, dangerous. No Americans ever fly in this airline. He's telling you this as you're in the air, right as there. you're flying. So yeah. we're flying, we're flying over and he's straight. holding a vital piece of the engine. <laughs> I uh, do not know where this goes. <laughs> so then we go to the pilot, and the pilot actually is an ex Eastern Airlines pilot. He's an Afghan. Mm -hmm. He's flying. He says, if we lose an engine, we'll crash. I said, what do you mean? Usually, I'm a pilot. You lose one engine. You use the other engine, the other yeah. Engine. But there's not a left lift, so basically we'll go into the ground. Do you have insurance? Are you able to get insurance? Is this, no. you don't have any insurance. No one will insure you, obviously, because of what you do. You've got to be very careful with yourself. You, and and you get wounded a lot, too, don't you? I mean, I mean, you hurt. I don't mean you've been actually shot, but you, you bang yourself up a lot, and because you're a doctor, you have to pretty much sew your own arm back on. Is that right? <laughs> 
I've got this little strap on Baghdad. This year, I, I was uh, coming to the top of a 30-foot cliff. I, I grabbed the two handholds. They both broke off, and I fell 30 feet, and then dislocated my, my left shoulder here. Right. I'm lying there. I called New York Hospital up on the cell phone, asked them how to relocate it, and at the last step, the phone went dead. So I had to go about eight hours out to a local hospital to have some guy take me to the operating room and put it back. Uh, last week, I was heli skiing out in Canada, and I jumped off a cliff I didn't see. You get no sympathy for heli skiing. <laughs> but I, I'm sympathetic uh, uh, about the other rip, part. Rip but... this rotator cuff, yeah. chipped a tooth out in Yemen. What else did I do? Wrecked my right hip. Oh, and then I so choked on peanut brittle a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> my soul, been, my soul left jacket. my body. <laughs> and then, actually, in Saudi Arabia this year, I had to go to this very important dinner, and I had slit my eye, and so I, I got the the camera, uh, you know, light, and took it and sewed it up. But it's very hard to do that in a mirror. So I got out of pose. You see, pretty good job there. It's a little higher. You always looked quizzical. <laughs> yeah, from now on. <laughs> but I hit every blood vessel. So I had a big kind of black blood. But I always take a suture kit with me because that way you don't have to divert. You can keep. It's just a good travel keep, tip. Keep on mission. You rip your eye off, bring a needle and thread, and put it back on. <laughs> uh, Doctor Danger airs Wednesday nights at ten on uh, Mojo HD. Uh, Doctor Bob, take good care of yourself. All right, Doctor Bob. Thank you very much. Thank you. Eric Lindell, come up and take a break. We'll be right back. Fine show tonight. Stay tuned next week. We got some great guests coming up, including Samuel L. Jackson, going to be stopping by, Matt Lauer, Martin Short, much, much more. So watch those shows. Take a break and come back. Eric Lindale before we'll see you in a second. Ah. My next guest is here with a song from his brand new album, Low on Cash, Rich in Love. And next Friday, he'll be appearing at Shuba's Tavern in Chicago, Illinois. Please welcome Eric Lindell. <laughs> well, that's our show, everybody. <laughs> have, a, uh, have a nice weekend. Have a good time. Stay tuned for uh, Last Call with Carson Daly. We'll see you on Monday. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>